Good evening, people. Welcome to another episode of BNR's content. Um, I'm not well. Gene's not well. Uh, but you had the, the rib and chips. Uh, chips. Call, call, shall I call him chips or chip? Rib and chips yesterday. But this is the main course. Uh, <laughs> the main course. And the main course it is, Gene, because tomorrow is the main course. Tomorrow is the main uh, game of the weekend. And uh, we're taking 9,000 people tomorrow whether they're ill whether they're all right we will be there um but how are you uh, what's going on and uh, i'm sorry we have to apologize first because normally on a saturday night it's me and Sadib with the the call-in show uh but today is slightly different because of ramadan and everything everyone's a bit uh tired we have to do, we have to preview the show we yeah. just simply can't go to or two and a half hours because it's been a right slog gene you wouldn't know the call-in show has been i don't want to know i don't want to know it's been absolutely <laughs> unbelievable, but I must admit, and I've admitted it uh, many times on camera that it's a slog. Not because people come in and chat rubbish, because um, you know, end of the day we we chat rubbish all week. But I'm just not used to sitting in front of a camera for two and a half hours. But today is all about previewing the big one tomorrow. And uh, how are you feeling yourself? And how do you feel about the big one tomorrow? I'm good, Asim. I can't. Um... On a personal level, all good, can't really complain. Looking forward to tomorrow and, um, you know, look, Asim, it doesn't get any bigger than Liverpool, Manchester United. Even more so in the FA Cup because, you know, you, like you mentioned, we're able to take, you know, 9,000 fans to, to Old Trafford and it's not every day you get to see that. So I honestly can't wait for the game tomorrow. Um, it's a place that we don't really do well, Asim. I know we've had a couple of big victories, but generally speaking, it's always a tough place to, for us to go, especially yeah. in the Cups. I don't think... I can't remember the last time we beat them in the in any any cup competition. It must be it must have, must be a um, long. It was um. Oh, UEFA Cup. Yes, that was probably in, in any cup competition, but in domestic uh, competition, I think we've, we've we've struggled. I think they've won the last couple, so I can't <laughs> wait for tomorrow's game. I think I'd be going to this game, you know, for once. I'm actually quite confident that you know we're going to turn them over. So I'm looking forward. Uh, Nasser says Ramadan Mubarak, my brothers. Ramadan Mubarak to you as well, uh, Nasser. Habib has kept a close eye on my drinks today. <laughs> I, only green thing about me today is my green uh, thobe and my green hat. So I've still got the green, Habib. Uh, but I've got a tea and uh, it's got some honey in it as well because I'm a bit under the weather as well um, uh, today as well. But I'm not missing anything. I'm not missing the game tomorrow, Gene. And uh, it's giving a cracker. Nine thousand fans, like you say, traveling down. Um, uh, what is it? The M62 from Liverpool, or the, is it the M6? Uh, no, it's not the M6, M65, M62. One of them do. <laughs> Even though whatever we... it is, whatever it is, Liverpool fans will crawl to Old Trafford to watch the mighty Reds play tomorrow. But in terms of how do you see Man United going about this game, Gene? Because United, even on a good day, I think Everton, you know, sort of uh, created. 20 shots against him at Old Trafford a few weeks ago. Whichever United fan that you sort of speak to, even on a good day to concede chances. But in terms of considering how they were at Anfield, do you see Man United opening up against us? In terms of the actual pitch, you know, United being at home, with it being a cup game, you, know, you, you can see United being slightly more expansive uh, compared to the game at Anfield, I think, because to be fair to them and credit to them, you know, they, they did a bit of a job on us at um, at Anfield, and they got away with it. They had their plan. We missed a few chances, but did we really deserve an out-and-out victory where we thought we'd blitz them? Probably not. Um, but with them being at home, with the home crowd, I can see them actually coming out. And in terms of the league, because there's no pressure on them, yeah. well, we have a ch chance, I seem to put a nail in, in Manchester United season because this is all they've got left to play for now, um, is is the mm -hmm. FA Cup. I know there's shouts for them. I know Spurs lost today, and there'll be shouts that, you know what, this, this top four, you know, Stroke five is still capable in, in, and it's still within their grasp. But I'm, I think we're going to put a proper nail in the coffin tomorrow. I just think that we will, we will turn up tomorrow. And like you mentioned, 20 chances every single game from, I think, for the last, God knows how many games they've played. Do that against Liverpool and we're going to punish you because the, the form our forwards are in, our midfielders are in, and even our defence. We are out. We are going to be there to punish Manchester United every every opportunity, and it'll be a real, real statement going into the international break. Yeah, hundred percent. It's probably we haven't, even though in previous years, even 
not so much last year. We were at Old Trafford. We had a depleted midfield that day. I think Milner was in midfield. Played, yeah. It was Henderson in midfield um, yeah. at Old Trafford as well. And all the talk throughout the summer was we need legs, we need legs. And we needed legs on that night against uh, my, even Man United, who played the count on the counter attack. But um, do we go to Old Trafford with our ch- chest open, Gene, that we're expecting a result? Even Man United fans on some of the, the WhatsApp groups that we're part of are saying we're going to get battered. But is it just sort of the part of the psychology? Because it, it, at the end of the day, it's Old Trafford, it's FA Cup. We will have 9,000 fans, but they'll also be up for it. Because like you say, this is probably their only chance and is their only chance to sort of, you know, uh, making something, their season survive. Um, they're not getting top four, in my opinion. Uh, they're out of all the other all the cups. This is their only last chance. This is more or less a final for them tomorrow, Gene. Yeah, because if you look at last season, I think they, I think they, were, uh, they lost the first was it two or three games before. I can't remember exactly, but, you know, we... Ignited their sort of season because they had that performance against us at Old Trafford. They won, they beat us, and they went on a decent sort of run after that. Uh, and that's what they're going to be looking at. They're going to be looking at this fixture where they're going to go in, hopefully get the win where Ten Hagen is and United can actually go on a bit of a run until the end of the season. But the way we're playing us, him, I just mm. think they're going to go and turn up and say, okay, we go with our chest style like you mentioned, and we, you know, we're, we're going to go out there and, and show them what we're about. Of course, it's never an easy game at Old Trafford with it being a big pitch. You know, their crowd will be up for it. It, it most definitely will be, but we'll mm. be up for it. Our players will be up for it. Um, and as you mentioned, every adversity, and you've mentioned this in a few shows previously, every adversity that this Liverpool side is faced with, we turn up and, you know, we put up a, a performance. And I can see another thing. I can see another one of them tomorrow where the boys will turn up. And yes, K- you know, Caden Doyle, Dolan, sorry, very confident about tomorrow. So am I. How can we not be? Our forwards are firing. Our midfield are probably playing the best football that we've seen our midfield player all season. And we've got Van Dijk, who's arguably playing the best football of his of his career bar when he was like on a different sort of level. And, you know, even our our, our goalkeeper, I know it's Kelleher, but he's shown form that we've not seen him, shown him, seen him capable of. I know he's capable, but he's beginning to show that he's he's a proper, proper understudy to to Alisson. Mm-hmm. So we have we go in very confident as him. A hundred percent. Well said, Sheen. And sp- the comments are uh, very uh, full of confidence as well. And why not? But here's a question, Sheen. Here's a question. We like talking. Uh, we're thinking positive, but beat the press sort of asks a good question. Would you take a defeat tomorrow for a win in the league in three weeks? Yeah, I can never take a defeat at Manchester United. <laughs> well, Sheen, if you were offered right now, look, the I, league I, is the I, league. I, 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 100%. I'm Look, I'm not going to sit here and say I wouldn't take it. Every single Liverpool fan will take that tomorrow. Like, as in, like, we'll take that to us right now because the league is more important. That is the bread and butter. That is the one that we want more than anything. And if it meant guaranteed three points, because if you look at Liverpool's fixtures, you know, it's the, it's the two or three away games where I feel, OK, they're going to be the difficult ones. The Everton, the United, the Villa. And if you're guaranteeing me that we smash United and it's guaranteed points, I probably will take it, even though I hate Losing to United. If I had to, yes. But I think, um, Steve, I think we're going to bang them out in both games. So we're going for, we're going to hopefully go and take, beat, win tomorrow and, and take the three points. Fahim says, love for my brothers, Gene and Asim. And uh, the Thank love you. comes um, from our side as well. Uh, he's probably driving away in his cab, listening to us chatting rubbish. Um, <laughs> but like I said, there's, um, I think there's only one rule, one house rule. As part of the BNR, and I haven't said it, and we're sort of ten minutes into the show, but there were plenty of guys uh, in the chats earlier saying we're close to seven k. I'm not going to tell you how close. We've been banging it on about it, <laughs> banging the drum about seven k for a long, long time. I've, I've I feel embarrassed now. Oh, <laughs> this is part of the... after, after the show. We'll be on seven k. Put it that way. I'm, I'm after the show, we should be on seven k. But whoever is in the the comments, smash a like if you haven't subscribed. We even put a little new poster on today. Like, comment and subscribe. <laughs> so, look, we're doing what we can do. Please, you do what you can do as well. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And uh, get engaged with the comments because we like to engage, uh, get involved in the comments. The more you chat, the more we sort of um, talk about our beloved club. But, Gene, I know what you're saying, that you, you want to win both games. And I think we will win both games. But surely the league is the league. If you were guaranteed three points at Old Trafford 
in a couple of weeks, give them the bragging rights of FA Cup. But do you think, realistically speaking, we might have to sacrifice an FA Cup? And this is not me being negative. I'm just playing devil's advocate here. I see me all goes goes back to their two seasons ago in it when we went for that quad and we I'll always go back to that Spurs game where I always felt we just lacked intensity in that game. We lacked we looked like we were slightly tired. So sometimes do you think even the Champions League final, I know we outplayed Madrid um, and we deservedly should have won that game. Uh but would I have take would I take that? Of course, look, I want the league more than anything, and that's that's just the way it is. And you know, if it meant we won, we won the the Carabao, and if it meant was having a trip to Dublin, and, and we do, and we win three trophies, bar the FA Cup. Of course, you jump on it. But I just want us to win every single game. I just I want the, the confidence. This Liverpool side right now is brimming with confidence, and you know, with so many players coming back, we and for the first time, we actually have a squad big good enough to go on every single front, and which we didn't have two years ago. So. I'm I'm with the the lads who just go and win every game, man, and just go for it because this is the season where we have the tools yeah. to go and 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 challenge on every single front. What do you think, Asim? What's your thought? What are your thoughts? But you asked me the question. No, I agree. I agree. I think if we were depl- if it was a about three four weeks ago, I might have said you know sacrifice the, this game. We can go you know sort of uh, without it. Uh, it's a long run. We're in the quarterfinals. I know, but there's a Wembley, uh, prob- uh, a Wembley fixture, probably against Chelsea. Again, we probably go penalties again with Chelsea and we couldn't do without it. But how the kids have done over the last, you know, three to six weeks has given everyone encouragement that this squad is unbelievably uh, strong in terms of depth and in terms of quality. And now the players are coming back, Gene. These two weeks, I think we can go all, all in for tomorrow and we will, I think. Um and we've got two weeks international break. So we don't have a league game for two weeks. Yep. And I think the best a bit about the, the press conference yesterday was the amount of good news in terms of um, injury news we got yesterday from Klopp. Even Jota. Jota was a nice surprise. Oh. He said he'll have a chance against uh, the week after Brighton. Yeah. Trent, Curtis. So when you see all these players coming back, they'll need minutes and they'll need uh, you know game time as well to build that fitness. And if you've got two, three games in the FA Cup available for them, then it can only mean a good thing. Come sort of April time, our squad, hopefully, fingers crossed, will be at its peak levels. And what a time for it! all every, all the players to be back. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. The likes of Curtis, the likes of Jota. How do all these players, you know, sort of get them, themselves in the back, uh, in back in the team? And even though I don't agree with Avi talking about Kelleher, should start remain and sort of stay in the team. But it just shows you the, the level of depth that we have. So, look, I think we go with um, our chest open, like I said, tomorrow. And uh, we put two, three past them. That's what we're going to do tomorrow, I think. I think uh, United got lucky at Anfield. And I even said it. I know it was dropped points against United at Anfield. But even the manager said it. that You know what? It, he took a lot of encouragement from that Anfield game because... The energy was there, the intensity was there, the counter press was there, and that's why they got lucky. They wrote their look on that night, and uh, they could have nicked a few, but we should have scored, you know, five to six goals ourselves. So tomorrow, uh, on a big pinch, I think our intensity, our quality, our football, our combinations, and general quality will come through tomorrow. Even though Man United will park a bus, in my opinion, and try to hit us on the counter, but that was my next question to you, uh, Gene. They still do have players that can hurt us. Gary Neville calls them moment FC. They still can produce a few moments and that's all you need in a football game, especially in a cup competition. Where do you think those moments can come from? Is it the main, same players, but Ganacho or, you know, um, Rashford? But they've got Hoyland back now, haven't they? Yeah, look, Asim, we saw that. We saw how they set up against Manchester City and when, you know, they sat back and they had moments in the first half where Rashford could have had a he scored a brilliant goal and he had a couple of moments where I felt he should, he should have done a lot better. And that was without um, their number nine talisman in in, um, in Hoyland. And Garnacho, look, they've got they've got um, pace in their team as well and you know, they can hurt us. So mm. it'll be interesting to see how they actually set up. Look, I, pro- I probably do agree with you in the sense that they will probably try and hit us on the counter because that's, that's where they are dangerous. And yes, they rolled their luck against uh, you know, uh, Man City, 
but I think it will be sort of the same type of game. But I think they have to be slightly more expansive. The old old Trafford crowd will demand them to at least do something because if they don't and we get a goal, then it's curtains, and then the, the fans are really gonna get on Ten Hag's, Hag's back. And mm. yeah, look, you, you can you can counter that and say, look, try and come and play against against Liverpool, and it might end up being five nil the way these guys create um, concede chances. But it'll be interesting to see how they set up. We look, we just have to play our game. We turn up, we play our football, as you as you mentioned. We've got every single player, anybody that comes in, we're turning up to every single picture right now. Um, and whoever come to whoever's turning up, we're putting in performances, and and that's what we all we can do right now. We will go strong, we will play our, our best side. And I just don't think Manchester mm. United can handle this Liverpool side and with the with a confident Liverpool side that we're seeing right now. And but yes, in terms of how they're gonna hurt us, I seem look, it's the same old names, isn't it? Rashford can hurt us, and we've seen that in the past. Even when they're not being at their their best, they've still got um, threat, and they and Ras and and Garnacho and these guys will carry a threat on the counter. That goes without saying. Yeah. Yeah, just like they did at, um, at Anfield. I think uh, yeah. Hoyland could have scored a couple that night. Yeah. There's one that he was he threw on the goal and uh, he just put it wide or in the signed in. But Saman says we don't play well against a low block. I think that what that statement is probably more applicable last year compared to this year. I think there's so... We've talked about it on the channel on numerous occasions, Gene, that Liverpool have so many facets. Yeah. Not in terms of setup, not in terms of structure only, or even the formations and, you know, roles and sort of how the players are interchanging the positions as well. But in terms of options off the bench, you yeah. know, uh, Jurgen Klopp has been a big advocate of five subs and he's using them really, really well. And with these guys coming back from injury, I think even on the week, uh, um, midweek, we had McAllister, Van Dijk, all these guys on the bench. I don't know, there were a few people, a few kids playing as well from the start, but... I think in terms of profiles, McAllister, the likes of Harvey Elliott coming off the bench, the likes of Saboslai, I think now, even though we come up against a low block, we have so much unpredictability about us yeah. that we always somehow get through. And if we don't, then there's always Darwin Nunes in the 90th minute to provide a winner. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you, you, you hit the nail on the head, him in terms of, what what we possess because we've got weapons from every single angle and there's there's a reason why we score so many late goals there's a reason why most of the time whenever with Klopp has made substitutions they've actually made a real impact on the game uh, because we've got real quality um real quality and that's brimming with confidence and this is the key and and I, look I've mentioned it before this is a season this is different to any other season because for once we have a squad, a squad that's good enough to to challenge every in every game from now till the end of the season. And you see that with with the changes Klopp makes. Klopp makes second half in some of the games that we've turned up and played as him. It's been honestly unbelievable football. That football mm -hmm. that we saw at Man City in the second half was simply irresistible. How well we played and how well we controlled at Man City. A Man City side that was. You know, sort of time wasting. Yes, they had a couple of chances, but that was probably one of the best clock performances against Man City, and we saw that uh, in the second half. So, look, I'm okay with however whoever set whoever clock picks tomorrow. Um, but in terms of asking, in terms of the lineup, I, I want to speak to you about who plays on the right hand side of midfield because I feel though we've got a bit of a conundrum there, especially mm -hmm. the way how well you know Dominic Sobersai's come back. Harvey Elliott has been unbelievable over the last two months. You know, the amount of minutes he's played, how well he's played. Who mm. would you like to see playing in that position? Because that's the one area where I think we'll play <laughs> tomorrow. Uh, oh, that is a, a million-dollar question, Gene. I think I'm not trying to sit on the fence. I, I'll give you my name, but caveat everything. Even if it's Elliot or um, Saboslai, yeah. You, you, you. There's a case for both of them, isn't there? But yeah. I would go with Dom. Oh, I'm a more of an Elliot fan of what do you know? I'd go, <laughs> I'd, go, I'd go Dom. I'd go Dom. Why? 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 <sighs> because I, I prefer Salah playing inside. Uh, to an extent, I know he hugs it. will hug the touch line. He'll carry the ball. He'll come on the halfway line. He'll collect it and keep things ticking. But I think he, he gives has a bit more freedom between the left centre back and the left left back if Dom is 
going on the overlap. I think he is a lot more comfortable with Saboslai, even though he does have a lot more com- a lot combinations with Harvey. But what I would say in Harvey's um, case is with Bradley playing high and wide, it yeah. allows Elliot playing on the inside. So there's, this is why I say there is a case for both tomorrow. But a big pitch um, where we might need to sort of roll our sleeves up for a bit, drop deep, Saboslai collecting the ball from the defence, Given uh, if if McAllister is on is uh, in the ten position on the other side, Saboslai drops in the six roll and makes it a double pivot with uh, Endo. So just to engage, uh, get get some control into the game. So those variations uh, that Saboslai will give us, I think you know I think he gets the nod. General sort of stature in terms of physicality, I think he obviously is a lot bigger. But Harvey Elliott is that kind of guy that honestly I'm a believer. And I'm not just I'm not sitting on the fence, Gene, because yeah. over the sort of last six months, I think not just me, but many of us have said, look, is he a Liverpool player? Is he good enough to be in the first team? Uh, does he have the natural physicality? But I saw him play on Sunday. The likes of Bernardo Silva were struggling to keep up with yeah. Harvey Elliott. Honestly, they were he was playing on the inside, he was making combinations, his touch was unbelievable. Whether it was Van Dijk, whether it was Kwanzaa, whether it was McAllister, whether it was Endo, whacking it, the ball into those sort of half spaces in the pockets. And he was t- sort of controlling and he was turning and he was hurting City. And then the way he was pressing, yeah. it was unbelievable. Honestly, it was probably the best game that I've seen Harvey Elliott play against proper opposition, I call him. Yeah. A proper opposition. But if you want me to... I've provided you a case for Harvey Elliott here, but... I think Klopp will go with Dom tomorrow. Look, AK, AK makes a makes a valid point. I think because Elliot is one yellow card away from missing the next game, so Sova Slats, wow. in my opinion, wow. that, that's a that that's a that's a fair point, and I and I get that completely. And you know what? You're probably right. But for me, I think I just think the way Elliot's played played and the the form that Elliot's in, I think with it being a big pitch, I know. But I do. I think we're gonna have we're gonna have most of the ball in this game, and I just think he's good enough to unlock the defense and. The way he's playing, man, honestly, like you've just mentioned, you can't, there's the only word to describe him as he's just been simply irresistible. And, you know, he's, and again, I completely, completely agree. He's, he's been a player that, you know, many of us have doubted, saying, is he going to be good enough? But what he's shown over the last few months, you know, he's rolled up his sleeves and, and said, you know what, I'm going to, I'm yeah. going to be one of them players that's going to really take this Liverpool team forward. So, you know, fair play to him and, and, you know, long may it continue. And yet again, look, there's been times where, you know, he's come off the bench this season and made a real difference. So, yeah, may, tomorrow might be that game where, you know, if it is sort of stuck, you know, we need to, somebody to come on and try to unlock a defence. You know, he'll, he's the man to bring on. <laughs> yeah, 100%. There's a, we'll come to uh, Darwin Nunes um, shortly. There's a question here. Have you fellas seen Ian Wright talking about Darwin Nunes on Sky Sports? Very interesting video. If you haven't, is this the, the Monday Night Football that he did with uh, Carragher? Um, unknown, I think he was in the chats yesterday. How he said, I want to know, know your name, unknown. <laughs> so uh, he wanted to become known. The unknown wants to become known. Um, but yeah, confirm if that's the case. If it is, then yeah, I did I did watch it. He was basically saying, David Nunes, he runs the channels a lot more than Cody Gakpo, and we need to hit him. And this is where we do miss Trent, uh, unknown because he can go into the areas, um, that defenders don't really want to go in. He turns them away towards their own goal and uh, chases the ball and stuff like that. But Ian Wright was suggesting that we should do it a lot more. I think we do it a lot more compared to uh, Arsenal. We do it compared a lot more compared to City. I think we've got the right balance because we don't want to be known as a long ball team. I think we go when we really are in a position. We 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 work the attack, isolate the defenders, vacate the space, and then hit him. And we've got the players from, that can sort of find him from deep areas. So I did watch it, but I, I disagree with Ian Wright. He wants Liverpool to do it a lot more. I think we've got the perfect balance. Um, and if you see all the stats, there was sort of comparisons with Liverpool's Klopp side with Jurgen Klopp side. Jurgen Klopp side uh, are a lot more direct, uh, um, you know, compared to Arsenal and uh, Alonso's team, if you want to compare them to Leverkusen. But you wanted to say something, Gene? 
Look, I in terms of Darwin Nunes, I think it's, it's it's a brilliant facet to have amongst our team, especially in the first 15 minutes. If there are teams trying to you know push up on us, that's him. We just play the ball a couple of times. That's just going to drop that defense a further 10 yards, and that's going to you know, know that you know what this ball is on. We have to be very, very, very wary of this actual pass. So look, it'll be interesting. I'm look, I'm not going to lie. I've not seen the actual clip um, about what you said, but what you've just mentioned. Look, we mm -hmm. more or less, you know. Battered every single team that we've come up against, bar a few get to get teams this season. In terms of going long again, we we I agree with you. We know exactly when to do it, how to do it. And yes, it's probably we haven't seen more of it because Trent hasn't played because he's the out ball every mm -hmm. time. Maybe that's probably what uh, Ian Rice alluding to is. Maybe we should do it a lot more. But when Trent comes comes back and you've actually got the uh, a player from 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 the right back position with the ability to, ability to be able to play play that ball, we'll probably see that a lot more. Suleiman says, Asim, I was never interested about the tactical side of the game, but now I now I'm now you talk about it. I it I am interested in how we set up big or big up Asim and BNR. Um and he later on he puts another one saying we need the tactical show back. Fully enough, Suleiman. Fully yeah, enough. On, give my, partner, my partner. Him, my partner. My partner. I don't know if you Suleiman, you watched a few of the tactical shows that we did. My partner is back in the game. He actually texted me today. I am not lying. I am not lying to you. Uh, no, no. Believe me. Believe okay. me. Vicky texted okay. me today right. that we should get uh, the um, the tactical show. We had one condition because he wants us to sort of find a way where we we can't be done by copyright and we want to make it a bit more interactive and a bit more fun for the viewers rather than looking at a, a board that's behind me with some. Uh, you know, sort of uh, gadgets on them. But we want to make it fun. We want to make it interactive. So we, if you can advise us somehow how we can provide sort of, uh, you know, sort of clips, or even I don't really want use, to use pictures and screenshots. If we can use clips and not get done for copyright, that would be good. So we might need to do a bit of research how the tactical shows go about it. But you guys, you and Vicky definitely need to do one. I <laughs> It's, it's for the, for, especially for the channel guys look i'm not no tactical but i know vicky and asim they're two who are, you know present the game to us that there's not many people present the game to us the way these two actually do actually do present it. and you know this vicky gun he needs to prepare from me man because honestly the way he talks to me about the game is like you know i'm actually being taught a footballing lesson so you guys need to get <laughs> on, man. i'm being honest Gee, we, we've even got Abby talking about four, two, three, five, one. He, know, thinks, he, he thinks we've got 15 players on the pitch. <laughs> so you guys uh, need to start, start, start off, I say, man. That's, that's one for you to take. I think I think we do. I think we do. And I'm honestly um, uh, not chatting rubbish, Suleiman. That he actually did message me today. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully we can revive that. We invested so much into it, but we need to kickstart it. And it's all about time as well. At the end of the day, I know we want this to really kick off and with all your support, it hopefully will one day and it is already, uh, but we we have full-time jobs as well, unfortunately. The aim, the aim is, and I hope is, and I dream is that we do this full-time, on a full-time basis. Wake up and talk about football on Liverpool. <laughs> that is the dream. Uh, Buchin, um in terms of how we line up, I know you mentioned Sabos Lai. Are you going, there's a question mark at left-back. There's a question mark that's been at left-back for a while, even though when Robo has been getting minutes, but on the big day, how do you go about picking your left back? And what do you prefer? Do you prefer the sort of flying fullback in Robertson? Or do you prefer the more controlled, the more conservative Joe Gomez? You know, to be fair, I it's a difficult one. Um Joe Gomez has been brilliant playing in that position this season. Yeah, bar a couple of games where I thought he's done okay. But generally speaking, he's been a revelation playing in that position, allowing uh, the likes of Bradley to, to push on. Especially We saw that, especially in the Chelsea game, uh, the one at Anfield. But tomorrow's game, I I don't know why, I just think it's there for us to attack. We attack the game tomorrow, we go at them tomorrow, we will, we can get at them. So I want us to... Why am I hearing a, an echo? I mean, you're all right. You're all right to me. All right. No, I'm eating an echo. Anyway, okay, let's carry on. Yeah. Um, I want I want us to go with Robo tomorrow, Sim. I just want us to go. Robo. Wow. Yes, I want us to go Robo tomorrow. I want us to because you know experience counts. Robo. Robo at centre back. No, no, no. Robo at left back. <laughs> <laughs> I know we saw him for 20 minutes in the last game, but no chance. 
<laughs> him back. But I just want to see Robo Asim given that nod at Old Trafford um, with a prop because that's what I want to really see. We've got the six in Endor now, so there is cover there. I just want us to go full throttle. It's an FA Cup. It's an, it's an FA Cup tie, Asim, and both teams will go at it. So mm. to an extent. Uh, especially if United go one nil down, so I just want I want to see Robbo start tomorrow. I know he's not had the best of seasons. I know he's had injury, um, and that there's there's been a lot of calls that you know Robbo's not the same. And yeah, look, uh, I can understand that you know he probably isn't the same player that we saw three years ago, but he's still a brilliant left back. And I just want to see some balance on that left hand side, even more so with the uh, with Diaz giving Diaz the 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 overlap, which we don't really see when Gomez starts. So it'll be interesting to see how we play, but I just want to see Go uh, Robo. What about you? Who are you going for? I'll stick to the theme, Gene. We've disagreed on Sabosli and Harvey Elliott, so I'll stick to disagreeing with you again. I really like Gomez at left back. Okay. Why? Because I think the manager decided over the last, since Trent's been out, that Conor Bradley gets 60, 70 minutes flying down that uh, fullback. He allows Salah to be inside a lot more between the posts. He yeah. allows Harvey Elliott to come inside and do his thing in the in the pockets. But I think Gomez, if one goes, then one needs to stay. And it also gives us a lot of stability on the ball as well. If someone is aggressive, and I don't think Man United will be aggressive, but if an Arsenal come, to, uh, if we go to, away to Arsenal, or even home to Arsenal, or even uh, against Manchester City, I think it gives us stability. If someone really gets aggressive with their press, we've got an extra man in the in the last line when we start the attack. And then we, when we develop in, into the attack, he can go into midfield. And it keeps Luis Diaz on the touchline. Luis Diaz, there's no coincidence, Luis Diaz has been playing really, really well. It's because that trait that when he came into, into, into the Liverpool side, when we got him that January, or how we sort of fell in love with this ball carrier, this guy who sort of, you know, uh, got us up, you know, our, our bottoms off the, off the seats at Anfield, or even if you're sat at home, where this guy could so, sort of carry the ball and bring us up the field by 50, 60 yards is because he's re receiving the ball in deeper, wider positions. And also, it allows... Oh, if they're playing, let's say, we think, you know, they're going to sort of play with a low block tomorrow, yeah? This is Man United. Hmm. We think that they're going to play with a low block. Would it not be more sense to play Robbo that at least Diaz has got that that person that can go on the overlap where that ball's, ball's there for him to play? <clears throat> it does. I see where you're coming from. It's because if Saboslai plays and McAllister is going to be on the left-hand side, and I know he's been playing a bit more parallel to Endo, but McAllister doesn't like what doesn't do what Curtis Jones does. Yeah. So Curtis Jones can st stay on the inside, uh, outside, hug the touchline, keeps Diaz on the inside, and allows you know Robo to get higher. But I just like that dynamic dynamic gene. I think. We still a lot more control in the midfield when Gomez. It's the control, and I think you need that even against a, a poor Man United side. And Joe Gomez, as long I know he's not sort of a brilliant number six, but he's played that role. And the beauty of what Joe Gomez is now is you don't even know where he's going to play. He's going to play right back. He's going to play left back. He's going to play six. You he might you might replace Cody Gakpo uh, tomorrow tomorrow as well. <laughs> but no, I'm only joking. I, if uh, if Sarib's watching, I was just trying to tease him but I just like that dynamic dynamic gene I think I love how free we are I love how many risks we take I love how front footed uh, how front foot we are because Jurgen Klopp is a lot this is why I believe that it's a lot better watching Liverpool but I think at the business end of the season I think we've still got enough quality to break defences even though if we have to keep a conservative with Joe Gomez back. And this is all about sustaining attacks as well. We've been really, really good. Is because when we lose it, we win it up high up the field. And Joe Gomez provides that. If Robertson is high and wide, and um, I just don't like that dynamic. And I think Joe, uh, Robo, Robo is sometimes sometimes goes too soon. And we've been talking about it the last... I was actually going to bring that up. Well. I was actually going to bring that up in terms of Robo going too soon because there's been quite a few instances this season where... I felt as though he's the, when he's tried to press, the other teams broke, broke through the press and actually hurt us where they've created um, numerous chances and a few, I'm sure one or two have led to goals. So we have to be careful in terms of that because it is Man United and they have got quality yeah. uh, in, in the in the final third. But yeah. it'll be interesting to see what Klopp goes with. I in terms of in terms of the front three then, I, 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 mm -hmm. I presume we're going with Diaz, Nunes and Salah. 
Yeah, I think but just to finish off, but I think the manager has got it brilliantly. Uh, yeah. sort of the the balance because we take Bradley off and then yeah. we ch- we change. Yeah. So if someone goes, if someone comes on the um the right back, if Gomez goes right back, Robertson is the sort of Connor Bradley uh, on the left hand side. So I think you've got that dynamic, the sort of versatility in our play that we've got both. But I just like if is one, if one's inside and one's on the outside. I think it's, it provides us a lot more uh, balance and control. But going wow. to the top three, yeah, I'm not if going to the top three. I same question. Unknown goes. I want to give Darwin a rest personally, mate. No chance. We've got. He's got. I want him to start tomorrow, man. I can't see a defeat against Man United. He goes tomorrow. Why? Why would you want to give Darwin a rest tomorrow? What did he get? Sixty. Uh, he got sixty on Thursday, yeah. did he? Yeah, he got 60. Oh, did he get more? Same, I can't remember now. No. Oh, so I can't remember. He didn't he didn't come off. Did he come off half time? No. I can't remember. Maybe the chat. I was there. Bloody, I should know. Um, maybe the chat can uh, help us out. But uh, whatever he was, he, d- he didn't get 90 minutes, did he? 45, her son says. 45 on Thursday, I think. I think Shimikas, um, Harvey Elliott. And uh, who's the third? McConnell came on at 45. So, um, yeah, I think that was it. I think that was it. Harvey Elliott went to the left. Cody Gallagher oh, yes, came yes, into the yes, number nine right. position. Yes, yes, so, he says he's been playing a lot of games recently. But in a, on a big pitch, Gene, where you want United, I know they're going to be deep. But that is the question, though. Cody Gakbo has got two goals. United are going to be in a low block. Do you need... A sort of a more intricate type of player, or do you have to start Darwin Nunes? You have to start Darwin Nunes, man. And you know, you mentioned the amount of games that he's played. He's, you know, he came on against against Forest and and popped up with a winner as well. So and they were playing sort of low block towards the end as well. He does give you that give you that facet. Yes, the Cody Gakpo's look. I think Cody Gakpo's best work's done from the left hand side. Um, in the nine, I don't think he's been amazing this season. So I would stick with Darwin Nunes. And look, he's going to want to play against United at Old Trafford. 9,000 fans, he needs to play in that position. And there are going to be instances where Darwin is going to have that. That, that ball is going to be on for, for Darwin because United ain't going to sit in a low block for 90 minutes. They're going to have chances where they're going to have to come out even more so when if we if we go one and up where the onus is going to be on them to actually come out. And when they've got, I mean, if that happens, then you know Darwin's the perfect player to hit them. So look, I think he starts tomorrow. We we see, we assess it around sixty minutes to see how how well the team's doing and you know what we're doing. But give him at least sixty minutes tomorrow. He has to start. Okay, I agree. How can you not start Darwin Nunes against Man United? It, he didn't play at Old Trafford last season. Curtis goes because he was suspended, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. He was. Player that we used against against them last season. And there's another player. I think has he got two yellow cards from a, a ban? I think he's two yeah. yellow cards away. Jurgen Klopp, if you actually watch him, Gene, obviously I'm I'm sat behind him, so I see every um you know action of Jurgen. And judging by your face, I just I know you want to say Klopp can, but um <laughs> that's, that's what I to say. <laughs> but honestly, if he fouls someone, if he go has a go at the ref, Jurgen Klopp is just doing this to Darwin Nunes all the time. He knows he's a nutter, absolute nutter. He's, he, he just laughs when he, he tries a bicycle for 50 yards, uh, like 30 yards. <laughs> he's allowed, man. He's allowed to do what he He's wants, allowed. Man. But honestly, he's an absolute uh, uh, guy, unpredictable. I he's think blockbuster, that's, man. He's blockbuster. He's blockbuster. An unbe- unpredictable blockbuster of a maverick. And uh, what a player. What a man. And uh, where's his heart on the sleeve? And that's what Liverpool fans love about that lad. But um, yeah, I think he starts. He starts every single day, and just like Atik said, is use use the pitch and stretch them. It's a big pitch, and we have to. This is why I wanted uh, Gomez as well. It's a big pitch, but you know when Manchester City go to Old Trafford, they control the game, quiet the crowd, and um, you know let their quality come through. And I think this is what we need to do tomorrow. And David Nunez's connecting play has been a feature, but an underrated feature this season because his touch. His sort of awareness of his players, where they are, and what's what's happening around him, has been very, very good. And uh, we've all talked about it. How his sort of interplay has improved by 20, 30 percent this massively. season, massively. And uh, let's see what happens tomorrow. But I think he starts. I don't even think it's, it, it think it's a, a question. But 
How many minutes is Muhammad Salah getting tomorrow, Gene? Because I think Muhammad Salah is at 70% fitness to, uh, at the moment. Agreed, agreed. agreed. Do you I think th he gets 60 tomorrow? Yeah, minimum 60. I assume. He, I, I think he didn't he play the whole he played the whole game against um oh, he he was gonna come off. I'm yeah. admitted that, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. So look at minimum 60, 70 minutes. I assume he plays. I think we'll see how well he's doing and, and assess it as the game goes on. But if he gets six, 50, 60 minutes, sorry, 60, 70 minutes, I'll be happy with that. He's not going to the um to the to the to the to Egypt. That's that's good news. He'll get two weeks rest mm. in terms of being at Anfield and, and, and recuperating from his actual injury when when he when the the international breaks over. We're going to see a fully fit, hundred percent Salah to go full throttle from then till the end of the season. So that's huge for us. But tomorrow he get, gets sixty minutes minimum. Has to. Otherwise, everybody the way you're talking, we're going to be taking so many players off. With Darwin coming off, Salah coming off, the game might still be in the balance at that time. I know it's Man United, and we are all confident that you know we're probably going to put them to the sword. But anything can happen. United are. United will be up for it, um, and they are good. They've got players that can hurt us. So. I think we're just going to play by ear and see how well the players are, if they're fit enough, they, if they, in terms of fatigue, are they okay, can they carry on? And then I think Pop will make his decision from there. Okay, yeah, well, okay. I think that's the team then done, isn't it? We've got the back line. Uh, we're going with Bradley, we're going Kwanzaa, we're going Van Dyke. Kwanzaa, you're going? And go, um, Canate is not going to make it. He's in the French squad, isn't it? Uh, uh, judging by Klopp's I'm, comments, I'm just going against you because you're going against me in every single position. So, <laughs> no, judging by Klopp's comments, he said it, didn't he? That uh, I can't remember exactly. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah. paraphrasing. He said probably. He said probably he won't make it. This one then. <laughs> yeah, so Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa starts. Um, who do you think Klopp will go for at left back? Not you, Klopp. Robbo. He played. He played ninety minutes, didn't he? Or oh, no, he came off. Yeah, he, he came, came off. off. Came, came off, off for Van Dijk, didn't he? Yeah. So, <coughs> so okay. I think he's, he, I think he goes with Robo, Robo, Kwanzaa, Kanata, okay, VVD, Bradley. The midfield we're going with Dom. Then or I'll give you Dom, uh, Endo, and McAllister, and then the front three is the front three, the front, the, the real front three. I'm going with Tayyip, Kelleher, Gomez, Verge, Kwanzaa, Bradley, Endo. Dom, Mac, Diaz, Nunes, Salah. I think that's that's going to be the team. <clears throat> and that's a prediction, by the way. It's not. It's not. Ex <laughs> it's not exclusive. Um, okay. I, there was a question that I wanted to uh, pose to you, but I think I've lost it in the. Um, there we are. There we are. Suleiman, Suleiman says, "Could you see Robo going in the summer?" But before we come to that, just give me your prediction for tomorrow. And you know what you're going to say this is the oh, three nil. Three nil. Wow. Yeah, I'm going, but they're getting it tomorrow, man. They're getting okay. it. If you go three nil, I'm going four nil. Oh, that's all right. <clears throat> At least we didn't go three one this time. <laughs> I think we might see another Salah trick tomorrow. I won't be surprised. I would I think surprised. we might they're gonna, I love they're, they're gonna be playing the lights of Lindelof. Uh, that so I think do you, do you think he plays Dal or left back? Is Van Bissaka back? I don't know if Van Bissaka plays. Is Van's, is, if Van Bissaka is back, then I can see him play playing Dalo at left back. I can see him playing a, a, um, Dalo at left back. But coming over to Andy Robertson, Gene, there was a player playing for Wolves. Um, I tweeted, in nothing I don't like about the Wolves left back. Uh, he scored one. He set up one. He's a player that's constantly linked with Liverpool. But do you think there's real interest in Liverpool? Do you think he's the kind of player that is suited for Liverpool? And do you think that we go for him in the summer? Asim, he's a brilliant, brilliant footballer. And you know, every time I've seen, I know there's only a, there's only a few defenders um, in the Premier League that have caused Mohamed Salah, you know, give us give him a diff difficult time, and he's definitely been one of them. He's always given Salah a game. And I can only go by from what I've seen of him, mainly when he's played against Liverpool. And he's always had a really, really good game. Um, mm -hmm. I'd love him to for, for us to sign him. I think he's just got everything. He's a proper, proper modern day fullback, attacking fullback. Um, and you need that. He's so comfortable on the ball as well. And, and he's, you know, he's he's really, really good defensively. I think there was the um, we were linked to him in the past. We've watched him in the past as well. I think when he was playing in France. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he was in France before he came to, to Wolves. 
Um, but the, I've heard from people say that where we are, you know, he's been, he was looked at previously. So why not? I really, really like the, the lad. And I know no one goes, what, what would that mean for Simicast? Look, Simicast signed a new contract um, last season. I'm pretty sure he did. So at least. Machine. How much you're gonna, you gonna play in three at the back? He's good players in there. No, forward. no, no. I, I was gonna ask you about Shimikas because I know he might have signed a new contract, but is that kind of strategic on Liverpool's behalf just to keep the value? 100 percent And it makes sense. You know, we've we we can't be seen. We've we lost a few players going on a free. The likes of Kaito went on a free, Oxlade went on a free. There's a, maybe a few others that probably went on a free over the last few years. Vinaldum is another one. So we have to prepare ourselves in terms of the market, the way football's going now. I think you have to be able to sell uh, players and and yeah. be able to recuperate some sort of money, especially with this FFP business. So mm -hmm. it makes sense why we did that, and it makes sense that um, we would, you know, sign these players up to longer contracts, that so we can actually bring in some sort of money. But yeah, look, Evan makes a fair point. We don't know, even know who the court's going to be and who, which sort of player that we're going to get and what sort of system that manager is going to play. Because it, it, is he going to stick? It's to our the friend. It's our friend selection. Oh, I thought I thought it was Evan then for a second. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know the <laughs> selection. You know, is Javi Alonso, man. So you keep you keep telling me it's Javi Alonso. So I'm just going with that. Otto um, Otto says, "Avi said we are not going for him." Avi says a lot of things, boys. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Avi says a lot of things. I mean, we would have been sold two years ago if it was to Avi. So let's not take a mistake. Avi's news with a pinch, pinch of salt, boys. <laughs> Here's another question from our brother, uh, Tamizi. Big up, Tamizi. Ever present in the, the comments as well. Maybe like uh, it. Estupinian or Eight Nuri, both Premier League experience. Choose like one, Gene. Really, really like them both, Asim. Really Choose like one. Them. Choose one. Forget the fence. Jump on one side. Yeah. Uh... They both do well against Liverpool. I know they've all they always had a good game. They, and again, both of them actually or, or whenever they've been up against Salah have always done really well. So fair play to them both. Um, but I really like Nuri man, so I'm just gonna go with that. How old is his opinion? Is he, um, I don't know exactly his age. Check now if, you, if, the, if the guys in the comments is terrible. One guy goes, Dom goes, his opinion is terrible <laughs> defending. Wow, I agree I, with him. I agree with him. I think his opinion is is more of a wing back. Uh, rather than a full um, a full back, yeah, yeah. Them as well, I, think. I think Nuri is a lot better defensively. He's twenty five. Tayyip says, uh, and Nuri's twenty two. I think. Yeah, Tayyip's changed his mind. It's probably his birthday now. Twenty six. <laughs> uh, Captain Sal, he says Nuri would be my choice. Selection says Ain't Nuri is his choice as well. But I think you know, uh, whenever I watch Ain't Nuri's and Ain't Nuri's Ain't Nuri uh, live. I think his strong legs and his recovery, it really sort of is apparent. And uh, he always seems to do well against Salah as well, whoever's playing on that uh, right-hand side for us. And um, But uh, I think Liverpool's interest is there. But like Selection says, we don't even know who the manager is. And if it's Alonso, and if Alonso comes and plays this 3-4-3 system, then you do need someone like Enori, who is a wing-back. Uh, yeah. in that position and then he can sort of um, you know tuck in as a, a fifth defender as well if need be but I don't know I think Liverpool will probably if they let someone like Shimakas go then I would like Liverpool to buy someone like Hinsapi like a, a left-sided centre-back who can play uh, in that role I think we're all right um, in that department if Robo sticks around in uh, Shimaka sticks around. If we do need to have that sort of profile, we're okay. But I definitely need want Liverpool to buy someone like a, a Nathan Ake, for example. I yeah. think our I think our team lacks a Nathan Ake. I know Joe Gomez plays that role at the moment, but for balance purposes, I think a, a left foot is you know is the ultimate. And I think Liverpool look at that. But everything's up in the air at the moment, isn't it? Because we we don't have a manager set in stone at the moment for the summer. If it is Alonso, does he play that 3-4-3 system? Does he sort of tinker with Jurgen Klopp's system? Or does he fine-tune it? And he didn't play the 3-4-3 when he had uh, the Sociedad B team. So does he go and assess his squad and then use the best formation for that squad? I think he does. He, sticks to, the, he sticks to the Alonso's principles, like the possession-based, keeping the shorter passes, 
but I think he doesn't really rip up what's you know he doesn't need to he doesn't need to do that so let's see what happens but uh, here's a comment Gene uh, from our brother uh, Bilal uh, nice to see him in the house. He says, Assalamu alaikum, Ramadan and Kareem. Big up BNR in the chat. Tomorrow is a big one. Another obstacle in our way for the quad rupal. I'm going to edit that, uh, Bilal. I'm calling it Klop rupal. I'm calling it the Klop rupal. <laughs> Inshallah. Where, Where, did on the move? Huh? Where did you nick that from? <laughs> Come on, man. Look at me, I'll man. Let you up, I'll I think, let you I think about these things. <laughs> All right, whatever. You <laughs> well, you're definitely nicking it for you to tomorrow. You better tag me. You better tag me. I'll give you that. It's a good one, bro. A good We're one. on the move, and this bus move. isn't stopping. Believe, and I think this is what is um, the message of the night that Gene, this season, nobody expected it. Nobody expected it, even the wildest of believers. But now we're here now. We're approaching the business end of the season, and anything is possible. That's the beauty of this final season with Jurgen Klopp, that we are in every single competition, fighting on every single front. We've got one, one um, trophy in the bag. And as you mentioned earlier, I said, we've got players coming back. We just have to get over the line in, in, the, in the big one. And that's what really, really matters. We've got the tools to be all the size. We've got the, we've got the know-how to win every single league game till the end of the season. I've looked at our feature list. You know, City have got um, Arsenal next. We've got a couple of decent home games. We get them under the belts. Then it's, then it's the United away. We put them away. I say, anything's possible. And, you know, we've got the basic lesson. We are on this, like a road together. We are, we're going for the big one. And we're going to go for every single thing. And and you hear the players, how much they want to do it for Klopp. And mm. you from the fans, you, every game that we're going to, the atmosphere has been unbelievable at times. And, Sometimes it's probably the best I've heard for a very, very long time. And it'll be such a fitting tribute to Jurgen Klopp if Liverpool go and win every trophy. Yes, it is really, really difficult. But if, if a team can do it, it's Liverpool. This is the greatness of supporting Liverpool is, yes, we've had some laws. But I can guarantee you there is no, in terms of laws, meaning we lost the, the title to Man City two years in, on the on the final day. But there is no club in world football that, well, let's say they are Madrid, but generally, especially in the, in the, in the, in the league, in this league, I say, <coughs> what Liverpool football gives you in terms of wins and what we get. There's no club near it. And and this is the beauty of us supporting Liverpool. The highs mm -hmm. are, are shy, but the, sorry, the lows are shy, but the highs are just on the <laughs> and It's all about, it's that all this is the year I say that the high is going to be the biggest one. So let's hope and pray it happens. Look what this, look, I've got this trending now, Gene. I've got it trending. Yes, so <laughs> respect. <laughs> Oh, here we go. I told you I got it trending. He goes, the club roof. Well, I love that one. <laughs> uh, got to leave you and leave you for the words. Um, Gene, uh, a few more questions before we wrap up because, it, as promised, it's going to be a, a quick uh, one today because we've got uh, a few other things going on in the background and we have to get up for the big one tomorrow. But um, there was one... Um, I completely forgot. The 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 no, appointment, appointment, the imminent, yeah, yeah, imminent. the imminent appointment of um, Pedro Marquez from Benfica. This all part of the restructure that's going on behind the scenes. That's probably, I know it's not sort of confirmed yet, but in the space of a week and a half to two weeks, that Liverpool are on the verge of signing their third guy that they're bringing on board. But what do you make of Pedro Marquez being an FSG? Employ, uh, employee rather than the Liverpool one or and do you think this is just part and parcel of Michael Edwards advising them and who the men who the type of people that he wants part of his his team look you have to give a lot of credit to FSG you know especially with the work that they've carried out you know especially you know post clock you you're seeing the wheels in motion we've got Edwards through the door with no sort of, you know, Hughes is going to be is imminent. And now we're hearing that Pedro Marquez is, is is on the move as well. Yes, it's an FSG appointment and not a Liverpool one. But of course, they go hand in hand, especially if they're all from a footballing background. And yes, it, there is going to be that in terms of, you know, we're, you know, we're going to be, bought, hope, we're going to be, the FSG are going to be more, you know, looks like they're going to be buying a lot of further, more, more clubs, sorry, in Europe or, or South America, wherever that may be. But, you know, looking at his um, his CV, I see him. I don't really didn't really know much about him. You know, he's, mm. he started off as a youth team coach at Spoin, then he was at City as an analyst, and then he was at um, the youth coach, youth director at 
Benfica and you know you saw what they've done at Benfica especially over the years they've bought some unbelievable footballers mm. and you know and he oversaw he saw, I think when he was at City he oversaw them actually going and, and I think they purchased three clubs New York City was one of them Melbourne and I think there was a club at, in, in Japan that he oversaw as well so it makes sense what's actually happening but you're signing you we're bringing in a guy that's been at Benfica and we know the players that Benfica have produced over the years mm. you know, there's a couple of quotes that he came out with that you know, yes, he, he mentioned something that clubs generally go on, but you know, there's clubs out there that have a model that they go and buy the 15, 16 year olds. But he, what he wanted to do was go and buy them really, really young, so yeah. then they actually understand the ethos and the of the actual football club. So you know, he speaks really, really well. So the you know, and he actually, I think he'll understand. The, <coughs> oh my God. I hope everything's okay. Bloody hell. Sorry about that, guys. I hope Gene's little one's okay. Um, it didn't sound good. Um, but we have to carry on with the show. Um, and I hope he comes back. Um, yeah, um, I think there was a question about um, who is Pedro. Pedro, like Gene says, he was um, he started at uh, a youth coach at Sporting Lisbon. He was a first-team performance analyst at City, a coaching and analysis lead from City, first City's first team to the CFG, CFG the City group, who is sort of, um, who oversees and controls them purchasing these, uh, the minority uh, club ownerships. And then he went to, uh, from CFG to a youth uh, technical director at Benfica. And I did a bit of uh, research on him, what he's been up to since 2018. And my question was, is I would I would have I was hopeful of him becoming a more of a Liverpool man rather than a FSG man. And what I mean about that is rather than him sort of uh, working with Michael Edwards and doing all these um overseeing these MCOs uh, around the world and sort of looking at Liverpool in terms of providing a base in terms of giving them um you know a lot more players. But um, I'm sorry, I'm a bit lost for words because I'm worried about Gene's little one. Uh, it didn't sound good. Um, but in terms of him coming and... Um, I'm lost for words. Um, I hope he's okay. Yeah, I hope he's all right. Um, but anyway, back to Pedro. Um, but yeah, I was I was thinking that he should come for Liverpool. In <coughs> It's... Um, it's a, a, a Benfica uh, campus that you, they call it the Benfica lab, the way they educate the kids, they provide the schooling. Um, and he's a man who's worked with Julian Ward as well. So I was hoping um, he, he provides us a bit of a base and direction towards that. But it's, um, he, Mohamed Kibria says, Pedro worked really close with Ward before he left Asim. He was part of the Darwin Nunes's discussions as well um the man says inshallah okay may allah give shifa um there's another comment here i just like that the fsg is trying to push forward don't know how it will end up but you know better than just a manager benfica have one of the best academies in world football 100% if you look at the the the, the talent that they produced at tayeb is jao cancelo um Who's the other one? Ruben Diaz and so many um, sort of talents. And I think if you listen, I think it was part of a video that um, Pedro did for, I think it was for Coach's Voice. And he mentioned um, that, you know what, this is um, not just about us providing players because the dream is, yes, to, you know, win trophies and everything else like that. But the main sort of, um, you know, ethos of the academy and the Benfica cap campus and the Benfica um, lab is um, is all about providing the talents and them coming through. Yes, they will make money and yes, they will get big fees for those players. But uh, that's what I wished for Pedro sort of uh, Marquez to come. I know he would love those facilities at Kirkby. Uh, and the access training center at Liverpool. And uh, well, yes, uh, I think we're going to end it there, guys. Um, the future is bright for us, it sounds like, as Unknown says. And um, 
I better get off the line. I'm just going to ring Gene now. Hope everything's good. Uh, thank you very much for everyone tuning in. It's half past 11. We've got 146 people still in the building. Um, and yeah, smash a like. I do apologize for the last five minutes. I couldn't really talk. Um, but I was worried about uh, Gene. I didn't really know how to react. But I think um, Sharon makes a good point. It probably makes sense to end the stream. But thank you very much for listening. And uh, we shall catch you very, very soon. Good night and take care.